diver was a freedom rider. She didn't care if the whole world looked. Joan of Arc with the Lord to guide her. She was a sister who really could. Isadora was the first Roberta. And you're glad she showed up. The country was falling apart, Betsy Ross got it all sold up. And the dance floor, right on my... You tricked me, Mart Finley. Oh, Arthur, what do you mean I tricked you? I did not trick you. Yes, you did. If I had known that this mental health center that you're planning was not going to charge any money, I never would have offered to bring Avery Potter over here this evening. You have put me in a very embarrassing position. Oh, come on, Arthur. A free mental health clinic is probably the most worthy cause I've ever tried to raise funds for. And a philanthropist like Avery Potter will be delighted to contribute money. I mean, how can you object, Arthur? Don't you believe in mental health? Well, of course I do. Up to a point. <laughs> You believe in mental health up to a point. That's right. If people can't afford to pay for mental health, they have no business going crazy. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Well, I promised to deliver Avery Potter, and I'll do it. I'll go and pick him up. But he's a conservative, Marty. I don't think he'll go for a free clinic. Arthur, why would anyone be against a free clinic? Because it's not fair to doctors. With the cost of college, medical school, internship, residency, a doctor has to invest over $100,000 in his training. Do you know how long it takes him to earn that money back? About a year and a half. <laughs> That's about right. I'm on my way, Maud. I'm going to pick up that scale model of the mental health center before Mr. Potter gets here. Just a minute, honey. Just a minute. Uh, Walter, you're not going to wear that tie, are you? What's the matter with my tie? It's a very expensive tie, Maud. Look, it's got Oleg Cassini's name written all over it. Walter, my cousin Marshall is going to be here any minute. Take off the tie. Maud? Walter, Marshall is a very well-known lecturer and writer. Now, I have not seen him in a long time, and you have never even met him. I don't want him to think that my husband sells vacation property on TV. <laughs> You're ashamed of me, Maud. That's why you invited your intellectual cousin Marshall in the first place. You think he's going to impress Mr. Potter, and I won't. True. <laughs> oh, come on, honey. Now, Marshall is a very well-known expert on popular culture. I mean, he's written countless articles on America's need for heroes. Heroes? Heroes. Now, Mr. Potter, being a self-made man, is bound to be impressed by someone like that. You think Marshall is better than me? Oh. Honey, come on, you're comparing apples and oranges. I mean, Marshall is a well-known historian, lecturer, and a brilliant writer, and you are an orange. <laughs> okay, Maud, I'm going to pick up that scale model, but I'm not going to change my tie. Oleg and I have nothing to be ashamed of. Hello. Oh, Walter, what a spiffy tie. <laughs> Thank you, Vivian. Oleg Cassini. What's he running for? Um, Maude, is your cousin Marshall here yet? Oh, no, he should be here any minute. Oh, and Arthur is picking up Mr. Potter. Oh, well, here are those uh, cards I typed up for your presentation for Mr. Potter. Thank you, Vivian. You're so sweet. Oh, listen, did I tell you that because of all the work I've done, the committee has asked me to pick a name for the mental health center? <gasps> really? What are you going to call it? The Maude Findlay Mental Health Center. <laughs> I think that's appropriate. Thank you. Sure, if they're going to put up a building for crazy people, it's only right they name it after you. You know something, good? Uh, Charity work always brings out the vicious side of you. Yeah. That's probably Marshall. Now, this is truly a gifted man. Vivian, you're in for a treat. What happened? I was roughed up by a street gang. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, no, stay here. Sit down. Sit down. I got off the bus and they roared up behind me. Oh, a motorcycle gang. Skateboards. <laughs> bunch of punks. Bunch of young punks. You, you know, maybe we should call the police. A gang, you say? How many were there in the gang, Marshal? Two. <laughs> A couple of punks, thugs, rowdies. Oh, I do not know what is happening to the boys in this neighborhood. They were girls. Uh, some, some coffee. Uh, no, thank you. 
It's society, Maude. Children are running wild in the streets, and it's because movies and television aren't giving them any real heroes to look up to. That is very true, and you stated that point brilliantly in last month's Harper's Magazine. Brilliantly. Oh, I feel better now. Maude. <laughs> You look wonderful. Oh, it's so good seeing you again, Marshall. This is my friend, Vivian Harmon. My Hello, Marshall. <laughs> my pleasure, Vivian. No, it's my pleasure. And you're so kind to come over and help me make this presentation to Avery Potter. That's the least I can do. Oh. You've always been a special cousin, Ma. Oh. And you know, Marshall, how very proud I have always been of you. I really cannot thank you enough for coming over here. I assured you I would not be able to raise the money for my mental health center if, if you weren't here. I'm glad. Is there a place where I can clean up? Oh, of course, of course. There's a bathroom right at the uh, top of the stairs. Thank you. A pleasure to meet you, Vivian. I'm sure this evening is going to be a very... Very special one. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? man up there? Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, that man is my cousin Marshall. Oh, he scared me stiff in his loony outfit. <laughs> what do you mean, loony outfit? Oh, my God! Allow me to introduce myself. I am Captain Alan Al Hero. Marshal, what are you doing? Marshal, you're mistaken, tall lady. <laughs> I am Captain Hero, defender of the weak, champion of the oppressed. My task is to fight those who destroy our nation's security. Oh, uh, now look, Marshal, I, I, I do understand, but Mr. Potter is going to be here any minute. Uh, remember, you know that we are here to build a mental health clinic, not to stock it. <laughs> I've seen reactions like yours before. However, once you have witnessed my superhuman powers, you will agree I am telling the truth. Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> With my high power x-ray vision, I find it difficult to see in small rooms. <laughs> You're really serious, aren't you? Captain Hero is always serious. <laughs> but, Marshal, don't you understand? Mr. Potter is coming over tonight. He's coming over here to talk to me about giving me money for my mental health center. That's very good. I know a lot of people who can benefit from a mental health clinic. <laughs> Excuse me. Marshal, what are you doing? I'm about to demonstrate the killing powers of this finger. <laughs> the tree in front of your house, there is a man behind it. There is. Easy! <laughs> Not so fast, curly-haired lady. <laughs> That's a dangerous man. But I don't see anyone behind that tree. Of course you don't. You don't have x-ray vision. <laughs> There's a man behind that tree. There's a dead man behind that tree. Oh, gosh, I hope it wasn't Mr. Greenblatt. I like him. Silence! Lord, I'm scared. Don't worry, neighbor lady, as long as I have the safety catch on my finger. <laughs> I'll worry until he has a net over his head. Please, Vivian. I'm, I'm sure that Captain Hero is not here to harm us. I'm here to defend you. Evil forces are at work out there, and I want you to all do exactly as you're told. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Maude, I, I want to go home. I think he's dangerous. Oh, come on, Vivian. He is not dangerous. He looks dangerous. Vivian, believe me, he is completely harmless. But, 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 Please but, keep your voice down. His finger might go off. <laughs> Sense the approach of the enemy, the deadly Brusonians. The Brusonians? Yes, creatures from the planet Bruce. <laughs> of course. I'd better secure the doors. Brusonians have one weakness they cannot walk through locked doors. Uh, uh, Captain Hero. Perhaps you could help me secure the kitchen. The kitchen! A capital idea! Brusonians are also known for their cooking. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Marshal, I must talk Marshall! to you. Marshal! You must have me confused with that mild-mannered Professor Marshal Keebler. A nice enough fellow, but let's face it, he's no Captain Hero. Marshal is ineffectual, powerless. A pipsqueak. Nevertheless, I like Marshall very much, just the way he is, and I wish he were here right now. Could you, could you help me bring him back, please? Oh, what good would it be? He couldn't even defend himself against two girls on skateboards. <laughs> I would have creamed them. <laughs> oh, Captain Hero, Marshall, darling, you need help. Can't you see that? <laughs> yes, I know I need help badly. But Wonder Woman is in Miami Beach this week. <laughs> um, with your permission, Captain. I'll secure the back door. Oh, will you look at this, boy? Don't you think they did a wonderful job? Walter, thank God you're back. We have a problem here. Walter, well, well, you've got to get that man out of here. I think a banana dropped off his tree. <laughs> what are you talking about? Stand right where you are, or you're a dead Brusonian. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Uh, Captain Hero, it's all right. This is my husband. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Ola Cassini. I'm sorry, Mr. Cassini. I didn't recognize you. Nice tie. Thank you, Captain. You know, for a minute, I thought this guy was crazy. <laughs> you better put this away. No need for it. Now, it might go off by mistake. <laughs> Your finger goes off? Yes. <laughs> uh, Captain Hero, tell me, do Brusonians ever make themselves invisible? Only the lazy ones. Why? <laughs> well, I think I saw an invisible Brusonian up in the bedroom this morning. This is a job for Captain ha, 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 Hero! <laughs> the rest of you, wait here. <laughs> Maud, I know this is none of my business, but who was that masked man? <laughs> Oh, Walter, that's my cousin, Marshall. That's Marshall? That's the brilliant, intellectual, dignified cousin, Marshall, and you were worried about my tie? Please, Walter, this is no laughing matter. Now, we have to do something about him before Mr. Potter gets here. Well, let's call an ambulance. They ought to take him away. Vivian, I can't. He's my cousin. This is a very delicate situation, and it has to be handled delicately. Mr. Potter is going to be here any minute. Oh, Mrs. Nogatuck, Mrs. Nogatuck, go upstairs, get Marshall, and then take him into the den. Oh, no! <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, my entire mental health center is at stake. Don't you realize we have a millionaire coming over here, Mrs. Nogatuck? A millionaire! Why can't I take him in the den? <laughs> All secure upstairs, no invisible Brusonians. I'm afraid you're letting your imagination run away with you. <laughs> All right. I'm fine, great lady. Um, 
Listen, Captain Hero, we have a serious problem. In the den, it's the television set. We have reason to believe that deadly rays are emanating from the television set. We're also having trouble with our horizontal hold. <laughs> this is a job for Captain and, and Hero. <laughs> Over here. Yes, yes. No, no, no. There, Captain. Of course. Captain, through the door. Obviously. <laughs> That's probably Arthur with Mr. Potter. Oh, Vivian, keep your fingers crossed. Well, here we are, folks. Everybody's favorite millionaire. <laughs> this is Walter Finley. Mr. Potter. Finley. Of course, you know my wife, Vivian. Hello again. Oh, um, and this is Maud Finley. How do you do, Mr. Finley. Potter? Keep your hand over your wallet, Avery. We just walked into a room full of thieves and Democrats. <laughs> You're being redundant, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done my little duty. I'll be toddling along. Avery's in a very good mood. He just read about a cutback in the food stamp program. <laughs> Bye, Avery. Uh, now, Mrs. Finley, I've read all the literature you sent me on the mental health clinic. I'd like to get this over with just as quickly as possible. Oh, of course, of course. You, you have another engagement. Uh, no, but there's an all-star football game on TV at 9 o'clock. I have to watch it. Oh, well, this will only take a moment. I just have a, a very few notes here. Please, put in. <clears throat> There is a desperate need in Tuckahoe for a modern, well-equipped, well-staffed mental health center. People shouldn't feel the need to keep a member of the family hidden away. <laughs> Mrs. Finley, there's no need for this lengthy presentation. Let's get down to basics. Now, how much money do you need? We are shy about $100,000. $100,000? I mean, your money will be going to possibly one of the greatest, greatest... Fear not. The world is now free of the invaders from planet Bruce. Their temple has been destroyed. Captain Hero has done his job, and now he must rest. Now, Mr. Potter, picture if you will. With 50 beds no, 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 and... No, wait and a and minute. Is this a joke? Is this all a joke? I'm sorry, Mr. Potter. I'm very sorry. That man... That man is my cousin, Marshall Keebler. We had no idea of his condition, or we never would have asked him over today. Vivian, we better see if Mrs. Norgatuck needs any help. Yeah. Well, what is wrong with him? No, I don't know. I think he's, he's trying to, to live out a fantasy. He's, he's not willing to face reality. Don't you realize, Mr. Potter, that he is exactly the kind of person who could be helped by this center? I don't approve of fantasies. <laughs> I'll admit that Marshall overdoes it, but, but, Mr. Potter, don't we all have fantasies? I mean, look at people who play with, with citizen band radios and pretend they're truck drivers. <laughs> and, you know, is Marshall really so different from a group of grown-up men I've heard about? I, I know you're not going to believe this. There are actually grown men who sit in front of a television set watching a football game wearing a football helmet. What's wrong with that? Nothing! Walter and Marshall went into the bathroom. I think Marshall's taking off his Captain Hero oh, costume. Oh, well, I think I'd better be going. Well, wait, Mr. Mr. Potter, what about the mental health well, center? I will let you know. No, but don't you understand how much your contribution... Mrs. Finley, I will let you know. Good evening. Uh, oh, wait, Maud, I'll go out and talk to him. And don't blame yourself for mentioning the football helmet. Listen, you ought to see what, what Arthur puts on to watch Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Oh, I blew it. I blew it, I blew it, I blew it. Finlay, Marshall would like an aspirin. Oh, I'm sorry I dozed off like that, Maud. Is Mr. Potter here yet? Marshall, are you all right? Of course. Except for this headache. Poor man. He doesn't remember a thing. Poor man, he doesn't remember a thing. 
Why don't I take you upstairs, Marshal? I think you could do with a nice rest. From all that flying, he's probably got jet lag. <laughs> Watch that step. <laughs> Walter? I'll be back in a minute, Maud. Well, dear, Mr. Potter's gone, and I don't think we're going to get that contribution. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. I'm going to call Marshall's family. They should know about this. Maud, I just had a nice little chat with Mr. Potter, and I think we've come up with something. Oh, Mr. Potter, you mean you're still interested in the center? Uh, well, possibly. Uh, where's your cousin? Oh, he's upstairs. He won't be down again. Uh, good. He makes me nervous. <laughs> now, Mrs. Finley, if you can deliver on the promise Mrs. Harmon made, I will give you your money. Oh. Well, of course, Mr. Potter, of course, anything, anything. What did you promise, Viv? Well, well, Ma oh. Mr. Potter didn't quite like the name that you'd picked out for the clinic, so I promised him that if he'd give us $100,000, you'd come up with a better name. But, Vivian, what could possibly be a better name than the Maud Findlay Mental Health Center? The Avery Potter Mental Health Center. I like that! <laughs> Good, I'll write out that oh. check. Oh. <laughs> There's just uh, one condition. Yes, not one word about the football helmet. <laughs> Mr. Potter, I just can't thank you anymore. Uh, not now, Walter. I mean, you have no idea what... Please, Walter, what the city of Tuckahoe will do. It's Captain Hero! I know this is none of my business, but who was that masked man? <laughs> oh, Walter, that's my cousin, Marshall. That's Marshall? That's the brilliant, intellectual, dignified cousin, Marshall, and you were worried about my tie? Please, Walter, this is no laughing matter. Now, we have to do something about him before Mr. Potter gets here. Well, let's call an ambulance. They ought to take him away. Vivian, I can't. He's my cousin. This is a very delicate situation, and it has to be handled delicately. Mr. Potter is going to be here any minute. Oh, Mrs. Norgatuck, Mrs. Norgatuck, go upstairs, get Marshall, and then take him into the den. Oh, no. <laughs> Mrs. Norgatuck, my entire mental health center is at stake. Don't you realize we have a millionaire coming over here, Mrs. Norgatuck? A millionaire! Why can't I take him in the den? <laughs> All secure upstairs, no invisible Brusonians. I'm afraid you're letting your imagination run away with you. Marshall, are you all right? I'm fine, great lady. Um, listen, Captain Hero, we have a serious problem. In the den, it's the television set. We have reason to believe that deadly rays are emanating from the television set. We're also having trouble with our horizontal hold. <laughs> this is a job for Captain Hero. Hello, Captain. Over here. Yes, yes. No, no, no. There, Captain. Of course. Captain, through the door. Obviously. <laughs> That's probably Arthur with Mr. Potter. Oh, Vivian, keep your fingers crossed. Well, here we are, folks. Everybody's favorite millionaire. <laughs> this is Walter Finley. Mr. Potter. Finley. And of course, you know my wife, Vivian. Hello Ms. again. Um, um, and this is Maude Finley. How Mrs. do you do, Mr. Finley. Potter? Keep your hand over your wallet, Avery. We just walked into a room full of thieves and Democrats. <laughs> You're being redundant, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've done my little duty. I'll be toddling along. <laughs> Avery's in a very good mood. He just read about a cutback in the food stamp program. <laughs> Bye, Avery. Uh, 
<laughs> now, Mrs. Finley, I've read all the literature you sent me on the mental health clinic. I'd like to get this over with just as quickly as possible. Oh, of course, of course. You, you have another engagement. Uh, no, but there's an all-star football game on TV at 9 o'clock. I have to watch it. Oh, well, this will only take a moment. I just have a, a very few notes here. Please, Vivian. <clears throat> There is a desperate need... <laughs> in his loony outfits. <laughs> what do you mean, loony outfit? Oh, my God! Move me along, ladies. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Captain Al-Al-Al Hero! Marshal, what are you doing? Marshal, you're mistaken, tall lady. <laughs> I am Captain Hero, defender of the weak, champion of the oppressed. My task is to fight those who destroy our nation's security. Oh. Uh, now, look, Marshal, I, I, I do understand, but Mr. Potter is going to be here any minute. Uh, remember, you know that we are here to build a mental health clinic, not to stock it. <laughs> I've seen reactions like yours before. However, once you have witnessed my superhuman powers, you will agree I am telling the truth. Allow me to demonstrate. With my high-power X-ray vision, I find it difficult to see in small rooms. <laughs> You're really serious, aren't you? Captain Hero is always serious. <laughs> but, Marshal, don't you understand? Mr. Potter is coming over tonight. He's coming over here to talk to me about giving me money for my mental health center. That's very good. I know a lot of people who can benefit from a mental health clinic. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Marshal, what are you doing? I'm about to demonstrate the killing powers of this finger. <laughs> the tree in front of your house, there is a man behind it. There is. Easy! <laughs> Not so fast, curly-haired lady. That's a dangerous man. But I don't see anyone behind that tree. Of course you don't. You don't have x-ray vision. There's a man behind that tree. <laughs> now there's a dead man behind that tree. Oh. Gosh, I hope it wasn't Mr. Greenblatt. I like him. Silence! Oh, Lord, I'm scared. <laughs> oh, Walter, that's my cousin, Marshall. That's Marshall? That's the brilliant, intellectual, dignified cousin, Marshall, and you were worried about my tie? Please, Walter, this is no laughing matter. Now, we have to do something about him before Mr. Potter gets here. Well, let's call an ambulance. They ought to take him away. Vivian, I can't. He's my cousin. This is a very delicate situation, and it has to be handled delicately. Mr. Potter is going to be here any minute. Oh, Mrs. Naugatuck, Mrs. Naugatuck, go upstairs, get Marshall, and then take him into the den. Oh, no! <laughs> Mrs. Naugatuck, my entire mental health center is at stake. Don't you realize we have a millionaire coming over here, Mrs. Naugatuck? A millionaire! Why can't I take him in the den? <laughs> All secure upstairs, no invisible Brucesonians. I'm afraid you're letting your imagination run away with you. Marshall, are you all right? I'm fine, great lady. Um, listen, Captain Hero, we have a serious problem. In the den, it's the television set. We have reason to believe that deadly rays are emanating from the television set. We're also having trouble with our horizontal hold. This is a job. 
Or Captain and, and Hero. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Over here. Yes, yes. No, no, no. The yes. hair captain. Of course. Captain through the door. Obviously. <laughs> That's probably Arthur with Mr. Potter. Oh, Vivian, keep your fingers crossed. Well, here we are, folks. Everybody's favorite millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> this is Walter Finley. Mr. Potter. Finley. And of course, you know my wife, Vivian. Hello Ms. again. Um, and, and this is Maud Finley. How Mrs. do you do, Mr. Finley. Potter? Keep your hand over your wallet, Avery. We just walked into a room full of thieves and Democrats. <laughs> You're being redundant, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done my little duty. I'll be toddling along. <laughs> Avery's in a very good mood. He just read about a cutback in the food stamp program. <laughs> Bye, Avery. Uh, now, Mrs. Finley, I've read all the literature you sent me on the mental health clinic. I'd like to get this over with just as quickly as possible. Oh, of course, of course. You, you have another engagement. Uh, no, but there's an all-star football game on TV at 9 o'clock. I have to watch it. Oh, well, this will only take a moment. I just have a, a very few notes here. Please, Vivian. <clears throat> There is a desperate need in Tuckahoe for a modern, well-equipped, well-staffed mental health center. Fellow, but let's face it, he's no Captain Hero. Marshall is ineffectual, powerless, a pipsqueak. Nevertheless, I like Marshall very much, just the way he is, and I wish he were here right now. Could you, could you help me bring him back, please? Oh, what good would it be? He couldn't even defend himself against two girls on skateboards. <laughs> I would have creamed them. <laughs> oh, Captain Hero, Marshal, darling, you need help. Can't you see that? <laughs> yes, I know I need help badly. But Wonder Woman is in Miami Beach this week. Claude, <laughs> <laughs> is someone here? Um, with your permission, Captain. I'll secure the back door. Oh, will you look at this, Maud? Don't you think they did a wonderful job? Walter, thank God you're back. We have a problem here. Walter, well, you've got to get that man out of here. I think a banana dropped off his tree. <laughs> what are you talking about? Stand right where you are, or you're a dead Brusonian. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Uh, Captain Hero, it's all right. This is my husband. I'll be the judge of that. Oh, look, Cassini. I'm sorry, Mr. Cassini. I didn't recognize you. Nice tie. Thank you, Captain. You know, for a minute I thought this guy was crazy. You better put this away. No need for it. Now, it might go off by mistake. Your finger goes off? Yes. <laughs> Uh, Captain Hero, tell me, do Brusonians ever make themselves invisible? Only the lazy ones, why? <laughs> well, I think I saw an invisible Brusonian up in the bedroom this morning. This is a job for Captain na, 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 Hero! <laughs> the rest of you, wait here. <laughs> Maud, I know this is none of my business, but who was that masked man? <laughs> oh, Walter, that's my cousin Marshall. That's Marshall? That's the brilliant, intellectual, dignified cousin Marshall, and you were worried about my tie? <laughs> Please, Walter, this is no laughing matter. Now, we have to do something about him before Mr. Potter gets here. Well, let's call an ambulance. They ought to take him away. Maybe an ad cat. Move me along, ladies. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Captain Alana Hero. <laughs> Marshal, what are you doing? Marshal, you're mistaken, tall lady. <laughs> I am Captain Hero. 
defender of the weak, champion of the oppressed. My task is to fight those who destroy our nation's security. Oh, uh, now look, Marshal, I, I, I do understand, but Mr. Potter is going to be here any minute. Uh, remember, you know that we are here to build a mental health clinic, not to stock it. <laughs> I've seen reactions like yours before. However, once you have witnessed my superhuman powers, you will agree I am telling the truth. Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> With my high power x-ray vision, I find it difficult to see in small rooms. <laughs> You're really serious, aren't you? Captain Hero is always serious. <laughs> but, Marshal, don't you understand? Mr. Potter is coming over tonight. He's coming over here to talk to me about giving me money for my mental health center. That's very good. I know a lot of people who can benefit from a mental health clinic. <laughs> Excuse me. Marshal, what are you doing? I'm about to demonstrate the killing powers of this finger. <laughs> the tree in front of your house, there is a man behind it. There is. Easy! <laughs> Not so fast, curly-haired lady. <laughs> That's a dangerous man. But I don't see anyone behind that tree. Of course you don't. You don't have x-ray vision. <laughs> There's a man behind that tree. a dead man behind that oh, gosh I hope it wasn't Mr. Greenblatt I like him silence Lord, I'm scared don't worry neighbor lady as long as I have the safety catch on my finger I'll worry until he has a net over his head Margaret, please Vivian 